these paintings? They seem familiar. Depictions of heroes throughout history. The Age of Gods, the Empire of Ronka, and this. There was a man, a researcher who poured over these pieces. He offered us work when we needed it. Slaying beasts, delivering provisions. A funny old bugger he was. But he had a good heart. He believed this first painting dated back to a time of myth and legends. A tribute to the heroes of a long forgotten era. The story went that it was rediscovered by an explorer from Ronka, who was so struck by its majesty that a second painting was commissioned, commemorating the heroes of their day. One day you will all be here too, he said. Heroes immortalized forever. Maybe I'll paint you myself? I had a good laugh at that. We were only trying to make our way after all. Being heroes couldn't have been further from our minds. But it seems he actually went and did it. Before or after the flood, I wonder. Rather faded, isn't it, compared to the others? Or did someone try to scrape it off the wall? Well, maybe the man himself once he came to his senses. Do you suppose your deeds will warrant an addition to this collection? Or some other kind of monument? There you are. I have everything I need. Let us quit this place. Is something the matter? We should go. The others are waiting.
strange. The others on patrol should have returned by now. Our food will be overcooked if we wait any longer. We will just have to start without them. Would you call Master Matoya and the others? I tire of these games, Orianger. Why do you pretend you cannot see it? The blessing may spare him the fate of becoming a Light Warden. But you cannot be blind to the nascent corruption. He is not as he was in the Source. Though I have no proof, I fear that the light which poured forth from the Wardens was not negated at all. I fear it was absorbed, that he has been suffused with their light. Though I have given thought to this possibility, I dare not speak until more is known. <sighs> By the time you deign to enlighten us, it may be too late, if it is not already. Orianger, I know full well, after all these years, that you have only the best of intentions. But that does not make it any easier to put my faith in a man so infatuated with secrecy. I have had my suspicions ever since the Exarch bade you speak that day. But now I must ask. The Eighth Umbral Calamity and all that followed, Everything you claim to have seen. Did you? Help! Someone help! The Umorans are come for us! We're under attack! How good it is to see you. How long has it been? Not since your inauguration, unless I'm mistaken. Too long, at any rate. May I say how humbled I am to be invited not only into your city, but your home. You are as generous as ever. And you as disingenuous. Let us dispense with the pleasantries. This merry band of dissidents people are calling warriors of darkness. They have slain Sin Eaters, and by all accounts, the Crystarium is complicit in their villainy. And now, I hear reports of your people obstructing my soldiers. So I must ask, what exactly do you think you are doing? I might ask you the same thing. It should be clear, even to you, that defeating the Light Wardens represents the world's only hope of survival. Even now, the people of Lakeland and Ilmeg rejoice in the return of night. For a hundred years, they yearned for a means to fight back against the Sin Eaters, and at last they have found one. Yet you choose to stand idly by and do nothing. Why? Why? Because this hope you cling to is nothing more than a fever dream, an exercise in futility. 
Even should you slay the Sin Eaters, the world as we know it is beyond salvation. With what little land and resources remain, the people would be free only to starve. Before long, they would turn to violence, then to war, and ultimately usher themselves unto oblivion. They require a firm hand to shepherd them from the edge. The hand of a king. Nay, a god. I will see their dreams fulfilled, their wishes granted. I will give them peace, order, and they shall never want for bliss. Men are fickle creatures who entertain vague ideals without the faintest notion what they cost. But a little fear can go a long way towards helping them realize what it is they truly need. Sanctuary. And they shall find none in this world save that which I afford them. That is why the Sin Eaters exist. To unite the world under my dominion. A paradise fit to grace the Eighth Umbral Era. What was that? A minor epiphany, nothing more. You have always held sway over those around you. Those who defy you must submit or die. What sits before me is the inevitable result of bloated privilege and unchecked power. But man is more resilient than you think. His achievements are not the product of violence and bloodshed, but compassion and understanding. This calamity is but another crisis to be overcome, and we will once we eliminate the Sin Eaters. You poor deluded fool. These people care not for the morrow. They care only for the now, and the contentment they lack. What good is a paradise to them if it is a thousand years in the making, or even a hundred? You underestimate them, Lord Forthree. They see further than you think. I have beheld it in the blood and sweat and tears of those who would sacrifice everything for a future they may never know, that their children may never know. I have beheld it in the hopes and dreams of those who came before, which we bequeath to those who come after, that they might in turn build upon the foundations laid by our forebears. These are the bonds which hold man and his world together not your gilded chains, and I will resist your every effort to shackle him. In summary, you will continue to support the villains hunting my Sin Eaters? With tremendous enthusiasm, for I have faith in the future they would build. Why do I even bother? Fools, the lot of you! So naive! So painfully predictable! Did you imagine I did not know your mind? That I would wait until after this meeting to dispatch my forces? Even as we speak, they march to the Sin Eaters' defense! Insurrection will not be tolerated! The people of this world are mine to rule, mine to command. And you are no exception! What? How did he? Insolent swine! I will not stand for this! Do you hear me?
for the Knights Blessed? I do. I presume that is your doing. If you have come to Pale, I must insist that you first return him to us. You're in no position to make demands. By Lord Vorthry's decree, Raktika now falls under the governance of Yulmore. You will henceforth answer to us. Is that so? And the children of the Everlasting Dark have acquiesced to this madness. We have reached an accord, yes. Too many times have the Knights Blessed shunned Yulmore's overtures of friendship. The risk that you harbor hostile intentions has grown too great to ignore. Therefore, his lordship has claimed dominion over this forest and bestowed executive authority upon the children of the Everlasting Dark. In his wisdom, Lord Vorthry has agreed to recognize ours as the only permissible expression of dark worship. It's one true faith. You and your false creed are a blight on these woods. A foul, unholy corruption that must be cleansed. Little wonder the warrior of darkness visits both Lakeland and Ilmeg, yet shuns Raktika. Your perverted teachings hold blessed shadow at bay. You have accepted the yoke of Yulmore to spite us, then. Fools. Darkness will never return to these skies while they hold sway. Those of you minded to obey his lordship are to make for woven oath with all haste. We will leave you, but you may have time to prepare. Woven oath? Are you suggesting we abandon our fate to join those salads? What has your faith afforded you thus far? Nothing! We will guide you along the righteous path. And should we refuse? Anyone found here upon our return will be considered a traitor to Yulmore and dealt with as such. discuss these developments after I have tended to our casualty.